Hello, this is question 9 of the 2019 Higher Level Leave and Cert paper. The question, you can find it in the comments below if you, haven't, uh, if you don't have it in front of you already. And the question is one of those late section B questions that can be quite awkward. There's a lot of information thrown at you. But the gist of it is this picture here. This image, um, I think it's a Georgian window, I think they say. And they're going to ask us questions about this. We have X is the radius of this semicircle. And Y is the height of this rectangle. So the first question they ask us is A part 1, write P in terms of X, Y and Pi. So P is simply the perimeter. This is, sorry, they say uh, P is the perimeter all the way around this window. So P is just equal to X plus another X, two X's, Y plus another Y, two Y's, plus a, an entire circle, the radius of an entire, the circumference of an entire circle is two pi r. So half a circle is just pi r. Um, I'm sorry, r is, uh, we know what r is, r is x. That answer is pretty much good enough. I might like to um, take the x out of two of the terms. So we have x two plus pi plus 2y, you could take the 2 out of, oh no, I'm sorry, there's no 2 with the x there. And yet, that, either of these answers would be perfectly acceptable. Okay, so let's move on to part 2. In a particular normal window, the perimeter is 12 meters. Show that y is equal to the equation they give. So again, with these type of questions, when they ask you to show something, when they give you the answer, basically, try to ignore it. Try to ignore the answer. Certainly use it for some tips, for some help. But really, they are asking you to put y equals. They're telling you the perimeter is 12. They're telling you 12 is equal to x 2 plus uh, pi plus 2y. And they're really just asking you to rearrange this um, so y is the subject of the equation. So let's um, start doing that now. We'll start with 2y is equal to 12 minus uh, 2 plus pi x. I just changed this around really because I've seen the answer and this is what the answer pretty much looks like. Oh, I'm done, am I? Oh, wow. Th this little um, equation, um, factorizing the x out has pretty much uh, finished the answer off for me. 12 minus 2 plus pi x divided by 2. There we go. I've shown um, where this y equals this equation comes from. That is a part 2. That brings us on to B part 1. B part 1 just asks us to fill this table out. Again, nothing to get too afraid of. It tells us what X is equal to. And it tells us we know what Y is equal to. We simply fill the X into the equation and we get an answer out. So the first one um, should be easy enough. 0 goes into X. 0 times this bracket, that's 0. And we're just left with 12 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. We shouldn't need too much work for that. This second one, um, some of you might be good enough to do this in your head, but um, let's write it out a little bit. Let's put y is equal to 12 minus 2 plus um, pi multiplied by 12 divided by 2 plus pi um, all over 2. Yes, all over 2 from here. I'm sorry. So here we go. This was 2 plus pi, 2 plus pi. It's multiplying, it's dividing. They just divide into each other and leave 1, 1 12 here. So we have 12 minus 12 on the top row, which is equal to 0 over 2, which is equal to 0. The answer is 0. So both of these actually could be done in your head if you, um, if you, thought it, if you were able to picture this out a little ahead. But really, write it out, uh, because if you make a mistake in your head, the examiner will give you nothing. If, they show you, if you show them putting this here instead of x, you will get some of your marks already, even if you do make a mistake later on. At B part two, I've added in this little drawing here. They give us this in the exam, they would. B part two asks us to draw Y on this graph, and we have two points. And luckily enough, this is a straight line. Hopefully we notice that. Um, if we wrote this out a little differently, let me do it up here. Y is equal to 12 divided by two, minus 2 plus pi over 2 x. We have um, x with just a number in front of it, 
and we have another number. This is just a simple line. Here's the y-intercept is here, which is at 6. When x is 0, y is 6. Um, I'm sorry, 12 divided by 2 is, of course, 6. Now, this one down here, when um, x is, well, we don't know this number, really. When y is 0 on this line, x is this number. Let's just grab our calculator, and we'll get the answer to this. 12 divided by 2 plus pi is 2.33. 3907, so 2.33, um, somewhere about here. Oh, sorry, it's on the line, isn't it? I don't have to go up anywhere. So here's our two points. Let's just try and uh, draw a line between them. I've got myself, um, I broke the, the pole of a broom so I could have a little ruler. Not very professional, I know, but it does the job. So there's uh, part two answered. Part 3 then, I'll leave this up here because it's uh, fairly helpful to me. Part 3 asks us to find the slope of this. Now they're not asking us to measure it, they're not asking us to use the drawing. They want us to use this equation here. They never cleaned it up for us, and um, like I have up here, which would really help. Because the slope, m, is simply equal to minus 2 plus pi over 2. And uh, 2 plus pi over 2 is just something we can put into a calculator once again. So on a calculator that comes out to two decimal places, 2.57. So this is equal to 2.57, I'm sorry, minus 2.57. Um, of course, we can see that it's going down, so it is a minus. So that's the full answer. If you rearrange the equation in this way, it would have been quite simple to do. If you didn't, if you... Um, didn't realize to do that. It was also still quite simple. We had two points there, 0, 6, and um, what was this roughly? It was 2.330. 2 you had two points. You can use the slope formula and get that slope without much problem with these four numbers here. Right, let me rub this out and we'll start part C. For C, we're going to go back to this Norman window and it asks us to show that the area of this window is the equation they give you. Now, I didn't write it down because, once again, I do think it's quite useful to forget that they gave us that answer. Use it as a hint, definitely, if you get stuck. But um, try and forget because it often confuses students more than it should. They're like, well, what do I do with this? They go and try and use the equation they get them. Simply read the question a little better. It asks you to show that this equation is true. So basically, they want you to find this equation yourself. So the, and the equation is the area of this. So let's go ahead and find the area of this. We'll write a is equal to, there's two x's on, along the bottom. So 2x multiplied by y, plus we have half a circle up here. So a circle is pi r squared. So we have half of one of them, pi r squared, which is x squared in this case. Now it's not quite what they wanted. They would like it um, as a function of just x. So y is a bit of a problem there. But of course we do have y, they've given us that. Um, I, well, I'll write it down as I put it in, I guess. It's 2x, and here it is um, 12 minus 2 plus pi multiplied by x all over 2 plus a half pi x squared. That's simply what they want. They want you to replace y with what they give you. Nothing too greatly complicated right now. Of course, we'll multiply this out. This 2 goes with that 2 straight away. We're just left with a 12x minus 2 plus pi x squared plus a half pi x squared. Um, let's put these two together here. Actually, let's multiply everything by 2. We get 24x minus 4 plus 2 pi x squared plus pi x squared. But we can't go around multiplying everything by 2 because there's no other side to the equals. Well, there is a x, a um, function x, and a function of a with respect to x. But we can't multiply that by 2 or defeat the purpose. So if we multiply the top by 2, let's put in a 2 over the bottom. And let's clean up this top. We get 24x here. Let's see, all the x squares, um, there's going to be some of them in just numbers and some in pi's. So here's 2 pi and a pi, oh sorry, minus 2 pi and plus pi. So we're going to get a minus pi there and uh, we'll get a minus 4 here. So let's, uh, let's keep the minus 4 plus pi 
minus 2 pi plus pi is minus pi. It's a minus there. X squared. I'm sorry, maybe I did that a bit fast. Um, if you want, you can just uh, write out all three of those terms. Minus 2 plus 2 pi. Uh, sorry, minus 2 pi plus pi. And uh, the pi's cancel. And then I've just put them back into a bracket. Again. Actually, I definitely did that too fast because I'm already finished. I could have certainly done another line. But I, I think, hopefully you'll be able to manage that yourself. Um, pause the video, try it again. But that's the answer to C part one. For part two, they would like us to find a um, the derivative of a, the derivative of the function a. Um, and one thing I'd like to say here is lots of students give up on this and they they, they, if they fail to do part one, they often give up on part two. This is a case where they gave us the answer to part one. This was already given to us in the question, this answer. That means you could have done part two regardless of your ability to do part one. So many students uh, give up in that case. So for this, um, if we want to differentiate this, um, lots of students will get confused by the two. They'll start thinking it's a quotient rule perhaps. That's fine, it works. It's just you're doing extra work that you don't need to. Let's go ahead and uh, move this uh, two all the way onto the outside. Let me first of all, just write it again. So AX, let me just write this one over two all the way out front, 24X minus four plus pi X squared. Now, when we're dealing with, when we're differentiating, this constant doesn't mean anything. This constant can be ignored and done later. He can be left all the way alone out front. So we're really just differentiating what's inside this function. 24x gets differentiated as 24. Minus, uh, here's another constant here, minus four plus pi. x squared, the two comes down and multiplies, let's put it here, and uh, becomes x to the power of one. And well, that's, that's it, uh, we can clean this up maybe. Uh, let's divide the two into both things. We get 12 minus four plus pi over x. So that's the answer. Um, oh, I've left out uh, what we were doing here. And uh, the derivative of um, a, this is a here. This is the derivative here I got from that line. Okay, um, let's go on to part three. I'm probably gonna need a bit more room. So I think I'll go ahead and rub out part one. So part three is actually a little bit tricky, although it seems simple and it, it's certainly um, achievable to get some marks here because most students should be able to begin it uh, quite well. It asks us about the maximum. It says find the relation, relationship between X and Y, that's the hard bit, um, when the area of the window is at its maximum. So you see maximum, you see area at its maximum, I would expect a student to write this. That's get, gonna get you some marks already. Again, I would write um, it out a bit more accurately, 12 minus four plus pi x equals zero. Again, you've just got some marks, uh, probably the same marks, whichever one of these lines you write. But once you have this, when well, you should notice there's only one unknown here. These are all numbers except for x. Go ahead and solve for x. We would get uh, minus four plus pi equal, uh, sorry, x equals minus 12. Let's divide by uh, this here. We'll have x is equal 12 over four plus pi. And minus divided by a minus is a plus. So we have x, this is a number. Um, let's get it on the calculator. It comes out at 1.68 to two decimal places. Now I wouldn't usually get a number like this on the calculator, but it might be handy to see um, in this question uh, because now that we have x, we also know what y is equal to. We've used it in the question already and they've wrote it for us in the exam. y is simply equal to 12 minus two plus pi x divided by two. Well, we know what x is. We know what x is here. So you can simply put that in. 12 minus two plus pi and x is 12 over four plus pi uh, divided by two. And again, you can put this into the calculator and you will get 1.68. And if that would be enough in this, in this question just to say that x is equal to y. 
Now there is a little bit of a better way that I'll go ahead and do right now, but this would be enough just to point out that, oh well these are both the same number. X and Y are both the same. So when they asked you to find the relationship between X and Y when it's at a maximum, well the relationship is that X is equal to Y. But let's do that with a little more algebra. Let me, uh, I think I'll have room down here to do it. Let me rub that out. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll keep the equals over here. Let's just get all of these over the same thing. This term here is over two and four plus pi. This one is all already over two. So if we just get them over the same thing, we get them all over two, four plus pi. Uh, the 12 is missing a 4 plus pi to do that. And this guy is missing nothing. Minus, um, minus 12, 2 plus pi. Let's go ahead and multiply this out. We get um, 48 minus 24 is 24. We will get 12 pi minus 12 pi, which is 0. So the bottom row is just 2, 4 plus pi. 24 divided by 2 is just 12 over 4 plus pi, which is the same answer for x, which is equal to x. I'm sorry I'm running out of room, but I might write underneath that if I was on in an uh, exam booklet. I might write, therefore, x is equal to y. We can write that in a little more English. But that's, uh, that, would simply, that would be the relationship they were looking for. But I do know in this question, lots of students didn't realize to do that. They, they got um, this answer out here and they became confused. They were like, oh, I don't have X and Y together. They wanted an equation where X and Y equals each other or X is equal to 2Y, something like that. So even, uh, even uh, top level students thought, oh, what's going on here? What do I do? It was, uh, it was as simple as, as I just tried to show. Hopefully I did show well enough. Um, if you have any questions though, comments below. I will do my best to expand on anything I've talked about. And um, the next video I'll do on exam questions, I'll move on to paper two of the 2019 exams. So until then, have a good one and goodbye.